we are at Fripp's Farm with Jodie Marsh and she's going to tell you exactly what this place is all about. So I own Fripp's Farm, we are an animal rescue centre um, and basically uh, we rely on public donations so um, you can donate via our website which is frippsfarm.co.uk um, and we couldn't do it without the public's help but we have saved yeah over 600 animals all from slaughter from injury from sickness from death literally i mean on death's door and we've brought them back to life and it's incredible and you love it don't you i love it you do love it this is what we built so let's get on and show you how we did that so our first obstacle when we're building this hay store is that we're really close to the fence so we're going to do something a little bit different and that is to build the wall completely on the floor and then stand it up so we build our walls in sections this one's done i'm going to stand that up and then the next one i'm going to show you exactly how we put it together uh, they become a little bit heavy so i've got a special guest uh, i think he does plumbing or something like that mr davis <laughs> Hi guys. but if you do like electrical he has got a channel, so go check it out. So what are we doing right now? So at the moment, we are laying OSB down. This actually looks like the floor, but I've been told on good authority that it's actually a wall that we're going to be putting up. <laughs> so it's OSB down. We're going to rack the walls fully in OSB, and I'm just going to get some nails in. So now I've nailed down this whole sheet. I can then cut off the excess on the top and round the sides. Right, now that Davis has chopped the top off, we're going to chop the side. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either cut them off and then fit them, or you can do what we're going to do. We set our saw to the depth of the boards and then we cut them in position. We just find it a bit easier and a bit quicker. Right, so we're up to our last board. We've got to trim this one down and then we can move on to the next part of this wall, which is the biggest wall in this building. Right, so that is all the OSB sheeting done. It's now time to install our membrane and Davis is going to tell you exactly what that does. Uh, so this is uh, the membrane and um, it's a breathable membrane, one meter by 50 meters. Um, you're reading, you're reading the instructions. Roof underlay for both warm and cold pitch roofs. Right, Davis, this is a council tax letter. Ah, you're not going to do that. Right, so remember when we're installing our membrane, we go from the bottom up, so we overlap from the bottom, and we also lap it. So most have a marker, but if they don't, it's a 150 mil lap we want, and that's just to stop any moisture getting back up underneath. And once we've installed all of our felt, it's time to batten the wall. What the battens do is allow ventilation behind your cladding that you pick. For us, we're gonna be using feather edge, and that's gonna tie in with the rest of the buildings on the farm. When we install our battens, we have pre-marked our OSB behind, so we know where the middle of the stud is. Now we have centered our batten to the mark. We're now gonna pin it in, and we're gonna square it off at the top. Right, when we're installing our feverage, we're gonna have the larger section at the bottom and the smaller section at the top. And we're also gonna start at the bottom of the building, so when this wall stands up, this is the bottom and to install it we're going to be using two 50 mil ring shanks on the first board and then after that it will be a single and i'll show you where to nail it so these are 150 mil wide and we want a 30 mil lap so what i do is i set my combination square to 120 millimeters and that is going to be our spacing for the rest so we start at one end with our combination setting our distance and now, for our now, we want to make sure that we're not nailing through both. So we're going to come about 20 mil away or 30 millimeters up from the previous feather. And that's going to allow the balls to expand and contract. So we're going to continue the process all the way to the top. Remember, we have landed in the centers of our battens when we need any of our joins to land. And also, we're leaving a 5 to 10 millimeter space between each section again for some expansion and we'll show you how we cover that up once we get these on. Right so now it's day two here at the build and we're currently building the second wall now. This one's up, we've, we've braced it all up for the night, we braced it because obviously if wind comes and takes our wall down we'd have to rebuild it. Right, so, so far we have got this back wall built up out of our 4x2. We've got our 11mm OSB, so we've gone slightly thicker because this is going to stay as is because it is only a hay store. We've then got our roofing felt all the way around these two wall, walls. 
And then another thing we've done is we've lapped our wall plates. It looks like we haven't, but on top, that's actually notched around and lapped. So that way we're tying the walls together with our wall plates. So now we're gonna feather edge this one, which is the last of the awkward tight gap ones. And then we can start looking at the ones that are gonna have gates in to get inside. Right, so these two walls are complete. I'm now going to build the other two walls. The difference is we don't need to build them on the floor and stand them up because we have got access. So we'll show you the process of a normal wall being built. Right, so I'm going to work out how many uprights I need for these two walls and I'm going to cut them all at once. Remembering we've got a gate here and a gate here to get into this building. So let's go get some wood cut. <laughs> I don't know why I laugh. <laughs> so I've got 16 uprights to cut. So I'm gonna put them on my saw. I've lined it up to my mark on my first one. So here's a little tip for you. And then rather than measuring every single one because there's 16 of the identical cuts, all I do is I'm gonna put a pencil line on the base of my saw. We can rub this out so it ain't gonna damage your saw. And now we can just slide our studs up to that mark and cut them all exactly the same. Right, so now we're moving on to the main wall which is gonna have two gates so they can load the hay in. But we've also said we're going to chuck them a gate in the side so that way they're not taking new hay all the time they're going to be taken from the back so big recycling center so when it comes to the sole plate and the top plate which we're going to have two of but we'll show you that in a minute i've marked my bottom plate so there's my center mark and my opening and my studs for the next one i just line them up and then i use my speed square and i just transfer the lines across it's just a lot quicker to do that so if you remember me saying we're going to build these slightly different all i'm going to do is build the stud work the framework and i'm going to stand that up into position so we'll get that together now using our 90 mil nails and then before we stand that frame up we're just going to bang a line of ct1 across the floor and then stick our dpc into that and then we can stand that wall up the reason we chuck this little bead down is a couple reasons one it holds it into place while we're moving the walls around and two it's just another little additional layer of protection to stop any water getting into the building so when you're looking for dpc you can get it anywhere any builders merchants and we recommend 150 mil just so you've got an extra bit past your 98 millimeter or 97 mil 4 by 2 we call it 4 by 2 but it's not. And then we just stand it up. If it's a large wall, you may want to get a little bit of assistance, but this one's quite light to be honest. And then we're just nailing it off with our 90 mil nails. So this will be a set of double gates or doors as such, but I've made a little mistake. So come and have a look. We are all human here at the Home Improvement Channel. So remember those doubles I marked, one and two, that should be here. And I've done it correct at the top. And wrong at the bottom, but no drama. Just going to knock that over and re nail it. And then I'll show you what that second one is going to do when we come to frame these doors in. So that is the stud work complete for now. Now we need to fix our sole plates to the concrete pad. So we're using these concrete fixings, they're from Fisher. So we put one on each corner, like that. And then we're also going to be putting them every sort of 600 millimetres apart around the whole sole plate or the base plate, whatever you know it as. So to use these fixings, all we do is we get ourselves a 6 millimetre bit for these particular size. And then we drill through the plate and the concrete pad. And then with these screws, we just literally send them straight in, nothing more to it. Right, so I've temporarily wrapped, which means leveled the walls up because you can sort of push them backwards and forwards with a diagonal brace. So they're all level. And now what we can do is start adding in the framing for our doors. So when we marked out for them two around the doors, this is the reason why. So these are actually shorter. So we're going for a two meter door height. So they're at two meters. And then what we do, we put a plate over the top. So the reason we do it like this is because we're going to put some noggins in above at any weight of the roof rather than being on a fixing it's going to be planted directly on this timber which then transfers the weight straight down onto the plate so you ain't got to worry about any sagging so it's now time to put our noggins in or dwangs as the scottish call it so that is a noggin it just sits in between our studs so we've got them pre-cut we measure at the bottom 
because sometimes the timbers can bow and we want that measurement from the bottom. Normally 355 for a 400 centre. And the way we mark out for these is 1200 millimetres from inside our base plate or our sole plate. So we mark that on one side and then we're going to do the same on the other side to the closest stud. We then use a chalk line which is a piece of string with chalk on it and we're going to hook over that far mark which is this one here pull it through and we put some tension on the string and then we just ping it like so and it leaves us a mark for all of our noggins so now that we've got our marks we can start installing our dwangs or our noggins so we're going to begin above our line so we've got our 90 mil nails again in our framing gun and then we're going to put two in the end and then we're going to put a diagonal in this one because we can't get to the end but it's going to change as we go through so this noggin is about a millimetre too short, nice one Brad, but do not fear, Phil is here. So it's the same process, <laughs> we're going to put two in the end. The only difference is because we run our noggin straight, so if you stagger them they nail into the end, no drama, all we do, we get onto our line and we just nail up at about 30 degrees, and the same on the top. That is solid. Right, so a little bit different. Obviously, we put our noggins in after on this because we built it on the floor. Still can do it on the floor, but we chose not to. On these, we've put all of our noggins in, ready to go, and now we will rack it. Same process as we did these with the OSB. Right, so I've been dragged in today by the boys to doing some work at Fripp's Farm. So today, we are going to be putting some framework around these doors for this lovely hay store. Right, so I've just had a chat with Phil. We're gonna screw these frames on around the log store, uh, the hay store, should I say, um, just because these doors are gonna be a bit weighty. So we found it's gonna be better if we actually screw these to the frame. Right, so we've just ripped our C24 timbers down to create our frame for our door. So basically what we've done is rip these down to the depth which is gonna suit our counter pattern, which is gonna be fixed to the framework of the building then we've got our feather edge which is going to sit by the time we've obviously got another one lapped underneath that is going to sit 15 mil back from the face of this door frame right so what dan's doing here is basically we are dissecting the angle so what this is going to do is mark the side where this is going to be sitting we're going to do the same with the head which will be the top piece here and that then gives us our lengths and you can even work out your angles if you wanted to off that, but we don't need to because we know it's 90. But so we've got our line, we're gonna have another line intersecting it and that's gonna give us the sizes for our frame. Right, so like I said, Dan's put his two marks on each side. So now if I hold this up flush to the top and then he can come across and do it again. Right, so now we've got our marks, top and sides. We will measure from our base plate to our top mark. This will now give us our longest mitre for one of the legs. So now that Dan's got us our longest points, all we're gonna do is set our saw to 45 degrees, make sure we're flat against that fence on the back. And then we're just gonna cut that first. And then because it's the longest point, we've set our mitre like that and then we can just hook over the top so ours is 2100, so we mark off, and then we're just gonna do a nice square cut off the bottom. Dan did come bearing gifts. Look at them, look. Oh, he got this a lot of love hearts. This one's weird. for you, and this one's for you, Phil. Cheers, mate. <laughs> and uh, this one's for you. <laughs> come on, look come at this, look. check this out. Look at the mitre on that bad boy. Jeez, you're happy with that. Jeez! <laughs> right, so now we're going to fit our corner posts on. So we're going to put six fixes in each post, screw it back to the actual building, and it's going to give the front of this building a nice finish. Now we've got our laser set up, we are going to set it at 150, which is the depth of our boards. So we're going to set our first board up at 150 from this side to transfer the laser line to this side. Now we've got the laser line set going across the front. As we go up, we are going to stay level 
all the way. So now that we've got our measurements for our pieces, we've chucked some battens in. Danny's over on the saw cutting them to size. Danny! And while he's doing that, we can start installing our first pieces. Remember, we're starting at that laser line, like that. So our walls are finished. Dan has left us to it. Rude. No, I'm only joking, you come and help, but now it's back to us. So the roof is six by two, C24. It just means it's treated and it can sit out in the weather, which it shouldn't need to once we get it all covered up. And then we're gonna be spacing it out at 400 centers, the same as our wall. So we get up, square off of one of our walls, and then set out at 400s. Right, and because it's only me and Brad, we're gonna set you down somewhere so you can see us working, and Brad's gonna come and help me put this on. And so you know, we're gonna be using 90 mil framing nails and spiking through the sides, and then we've got some extra fastenings we'll show you later on. Right, so before we go chucking these up, you might not be able to see it from there, but we've put a chalk line or a piece of string line across the face of the two we've set in because we want a 200 mil overhang. Rather than measure out every single one and it might end up a bit we literally just pull a line and then we just go up to that line when we put all of our rafters in. And when it comes to the front overhang, all we're doing is we're leaving them extra long and then at the end, we're gonna measure, ping a chalk line and then chop them off. You can chop them first if you want to, but this is the way we do it. All right, let's take you up here to have a look at what the string line does at the back. So basically, I know it's a bit hard, but when you stick a now and then feed a string line from one end to the other, <laughs> When you stick the fascia board on, it'll be perfectly straight across there. So when it comes to the front, unlike the back, they're already set, we're gonna cut these in position with our skill saw. So I've put a nail on the one that's already set to 200. And then on this side, I've marked 200. And we pull our chalk line tight, give it a ping. And that is our marks for every single raft I've done. And now all we do is we take our speed square and we just go to our chalk line, like so, and then just strike a plumb line down the front. Because this is a flat roof, we don't need to set any angles, it's just a plumb cut all the way down. So we're gonna do that on every single rafter, and we're gonna use our skill saw to zip them off. Right, so there's a couple ways to do this. You can either go onto the top of the roof and cut down, or you can cut from the bottom up. When you're cutting from the bottom up, just remember, you need to be able to hold this and take the weight of it, otherwise it's gonna pinch your blade. Right, so we are now on to furrings, which is basically a piece of timber that goes from one thickness down to nothing. And the way we calculate our furrings is we take the span of our roof, so from point to point, and then we divide it by anywhere from 40 to 80 for a flat rubber roof, which we're gonna be showing you later. And then once we've made a pattern part with our skill saw, so we pulled a line from nothing up to our measurement, if we get our table saw out, you can do this with a skill saw, but it's a lot easier with a table saw. We then put our finish edge here. We've set that to the widest point of our furring. And then once we're square with the furring on top, we can just push, we can just push it through. Right, that's all our furring strips done. So we've set you up nice and nice, you can see what we're doing. And I'm just gonna start sending some 90 mil nails, all ring shanked, down into our furrings. It's a new day, our rafters and our furrings are installed as we did last night, and it's now time to install our 18 millimeter OSB sheets. Normally we have one up top and one down bottom. Because we're trying to film it for you, I'm gonna give it a go by myself. Make sure you give me a big one. Give it a big one. And it's up on the roof. Very carefully, as you see, I'm gonna get up there and start lining it all up. Right, so now that we've got our sheet up on the roof, we need to maneuver it around. So if you bow yourself, good way to do that is just to push off of the rafters with your feet while you're sitting on it. But obviously, you've got to be careful we are up high. So all I like to do is I just push around like so and just maneuver it into position. 
Right, so we've got it into position or where we want it. So we're square off the back edge. This building isn't square, so we've got to do a few cuts. But if yours is, you might be able to cut them down on the floor. So what we're going to do now is we're going to nail off the edge. Remembering we've got a half lap on our joint. So we've lapped halfway onto this joist here or this rafter. So we're going to nail across with our nails. And then what we're going to do on the rafters in the middle is we're going to chalk line them so we can see where to nail which i'm going to show you right now so we grab our chalk line and then what we're going to do we're going to hook it in the center of this rafter and we're going to do the same on the other end and then what that's going to give us is a reference so you can't eyeball these but it's easier just to do this it takes two seconds you know you're not going to miss that rafter when you're nailing it down Right, so all our full sheets are in. So what we've done, we've just cut ourselves some pieces down. They're a bit too big for the gap, but that's all right because we're gonna saw the sides off after. So we just pull these in. And again, with our nail gun. Now all of our full boards are installed, or all of our boards are installed. We can now pull a chalk line across. So you can see that's the outside of our roof. And this roof here is not your conventional rectangular or square it's really odd size and then we're going to use our track saw and just cut all of the excess off right that is the roof complete so all we need to do now is install our fascias for us we're going to be using a one by eight treated timber but you can use anything upvc aluminium whatever you like makes no odds but this is the time to install our fascias right now that the fascia is installed i'm just going to trim down this side so I'm just going to use a flush cutting bit hopefully that works that is the roof complete we are now watertight we've got one last task for the roof and that is to use these truss clips and what that does is ties the rafters to the wall plates so if you get any higher winds like the roof is strapped down and it's super important so that's a truss clip they go up and over your rafters, like so. They've got a little clip there that just helps them stay in position. And then to fix those in position, we use something called a twist now. So it's a nail that's twisted. And then all we're gonna do is fill in every single hole on these brackets with our twist nails. Now, if you're gonna do this every single day of your life, then you might wanna invest in a PPN gun. It's basically just a nailer design for these, a positive placement nailer. But if you're doing it every now and again, I'm afraid you're gonna to have to get your hammer out. So we're gonna do that on every single rafter and then we can move on to our doors. Right, it is now time to move on to the gates or the doors that we're putting on this. So we need to measure the opening and because we're having two, we're gonna split that between two. So we're gonna measure our total height and our total width and then we're gonna deduct 10 millimeters off of each width and each height, just to allow for a bit of expansion and movement. So the way we're gonna be designing these doors or gates is we're using four by two C24, which just means it's treated. So the first thing we need to do is cut our legs, which are the sides to height. So we have got 1980 for us. Now that our legs are cut down to size, we need to work on the bottom, top and middle piece of timber that we need to cut. So we want a 590 wide door. So we need to deduct the thickness of our legs, which is 90 millimeters. So we want three pieces at 500 for us. Now that we've got our middle sections cut, we're gonna be fixing it together with some 100 mil screws. So two in each side for us. So the only difference now is rather than having it conventional like this, we're actually gonna lay the middle one on its back. So we've got this recess. So once we've got our top, middle and bottom, remembering this middle is now tipped flat, we need to put in our bracing. So we need to pick what side our hinges are gonna be. So this is for the right hand side. So our hinges are gonna sit along this front edge. So I've just written H for hinge to keep it on my memory. Before we start marking out for our braces, our diagonal braces, we just wanna check for square. So all we do is measure from corner to corner in both directions, spot on. And as long as they're equal, that means it's square. If it's not, you can just sort of nudge one of the legs up and down, we're all good. And now I mark a piece of timber in the center and I'll sit it underneath my gate that I'm gonna be making or my door. And once that's underneath, remember, 
from the top of the door it needs to come down to our hinge side and once we're all underneath I can start marking it across so there and there and the same over here so I'm going to do that same process on both top and bottom and then let's cut to these lines and see what we're left with so little rule of thumb so we've cut our braces and a little rule of thumb to remember is when you're putting it on your saw and going to your lines it should total to 90 degrees so I had a 29 degree cut here and I had a 61 degree cut here so when I slide this in again flat not stood up because of the way we're designing these we should have a lovely tight fit right so we've added a couple of braces now at the top and bottom and all that is is to pick up these battens what we've cut so we're going to chuck those inside like that and then using our nail gun we're just going to nail them into position and once we've got these in we can start installing our feather edge remember this is the bottom take note because we want the thicker side towards the bottom edge and just like when we did the feather edge on the building we've got ourselves a little spacer and that is going to set our feather edge all the way up so that is the gate essentially completed minus our hinges so if you look when we was talking about bracing towards so if that's the bottom our braces come from the outside to the hinge side and what that does is transfer all the weight back into our hinges and when it comes to hinges there are many options so you can get the normal gate ones the big old things that come across the front but we wanted to go make it a bit nicer so we're using four inch fire these are like fire hinges for fire doors they're four inch butt hinges and we're going to be running three of those so for the placement the rule i use and a lot of people do is nine inches from the bottom of our door so there's nine and I'll just make a little line to tell me the hinge is going to come this side six inches from the top of the door and then again just to remind me that side and then we're going to put one in the center so the nine and the six inch why do we do it odd that is purely for visual so when you look the hinges look the same even though they're not because of the perspective of the door and where they are and the center one where we put our rail is why we put it in the centre. So now we've got strength in the door when we're transferring the weight back to this hinge. To install butt hinges, if you are going to go down this route, what I do is I take the slotted side. So when you get a hinge, you've got one that's not slotted and one that's slotted. So the slotted side, I install on the door. So we put it up to our mark and then we slide that slotted shoulder up so we're flush with that side of the door. And that's where we're going to hold it while we scribe around. So the way we mark around our hinges, you can either use a very sharp pencil or, like me, you can use a knife. And then we're just going to score around the outside of our hinge. And try not to overcut past your hinge. It's okay on something like this, but you should get used to not doing it. Because if you fit in finished doors, obviously you don't want scratch marks all around it. And then you should be left with this very fine line. So to cut in our hinges, there are many, many methods. So two common ones are obviously a chisel and a little mallet. So when it comes to your chisel, those little marks you've made, you just go around them with your chisel. So we hold it on our lines, tap it down all the way around. Then you will use something called a marking gauge, which is one of these. There's loads of different styles. And all we do with this is we set the depth of our hinge on our marking gauge. And then we roll that across the side. So like this. And all that does is tell us how deep we need to chop when we're chopping our hinge in without using a pencil. And then it's just a case of using your chisel to remove the material until it's ready to receive your hinge or we can use a router or a palm router like I've got here this is a battery palm router but you don't need to be battery and then we take our hinge and we set the depth of our cutter 
to the thickness of our hinge like this one is here and then we just use our router to take out the bulk of the material so you can do this many different ways but this is just my method for it i just take the chisel at the end and i clean up the edges you can get right up to these edges if you want to but this is just the way i'll do it i'll just tap the edge away and that is that finito and then once we've done all that we can test fit our hinge to make sure we've done a decent job now we need to pilot our holes remember always offset them towards the inside like so and now we can install our screws the reason we offset the holes is what it does is it helps to pull the hinge in tight so if you see the gap that you've got now when we do this up it just pulls it in nice and tight so that's why we offset our holes that is our hinges installed on our gate or door and uh, our next job is to transfer the position of these over to our frame or opening so a quick tip for something like this where it's outside on the end of most levels you've got a little bumper that's about five millimeters and that's the sort of gap we want on something that's outside it's going to get a lot of movement we come to the top of the door oversell the black bumper that's on the top that's our five millimeters gap we're going to have on the top of our door and if you just mark the top of your hinges onto your level that's now our marks for our hinges on our frame now you can do this with a scrap of timber or your door stops when you're internally fitting doors but for something like this this works great and that's what we're going to use and now with our level or our timber whatever you've used to get your marks for your hinges we're just going to bump that right up to the top and transfer our marks over to our frame or our liner right so just like the door we've got ourselves a hinge we're going to use the slotted side again even though that's not the side that's going on here it's just going to set the correct depth for our door flush with that edge and then we're going to use our knife to go around the edge and now we can route out our frame or liner and then we're just going to clean these edges up with our chisel and mallet or hammer if you like using a hammer Right, now that they're all cut out, I'm going to take the hinge, I flipped it around so that we've not got the slotted side, because that's the side that's going on the door, with a spare hinge, or take one off for a second, slide it tight up into our gap, and then we're going to run some pilot holes. Remember, we're favouring this side to try and pull that hinge in tight. And the reason we do it now is because it's a lot easier when you come to fix it on, rather than trying to hold your door, put pilot holes they're there ready to go right now we're going to fit our door brad's going to help me because it's kind of heavy and it's really high up off the floor so he's just going to lift it up into position up and in up 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 in and then we're going to get one in each hinge just for the time being so if anyone wants to donate where are they going and what are they doing so if you go to fripsfarm.co.uk and then the Get Involved page, there are loads of different ways to donate. You can give one-off donations, you can sign up to a monthly subscription. The best one is a pound a month. Uh, believe it or not, that's our best one yeah. for raising funds because everyone can afford Amazon. a pound a month. You've got Amazon. We've got an Amazon wish list. We've also got our local feed supply store phone number on there and you can literally call them and pay for a bale of hay over the phone yeah. and literally they'll deliver it to us. So loads of ways to help. <laughs> you've gone too far you've gone too far right that's it we are all done tell them what they should do uh follow like subscribe comment and don't just... forget to head over to her page and donate oh. it's all for a yeah. bloody good cause <laughs> <laughs>